versions of the three little pigs that we have read so far. Today we're going to add another one as part of our primary books that we've read. This one is from the author's point of view of the third of a third person narrative. So just somebody observing the story. This one is a great example of a um, second person narrative where the author or the wolf is talking to you, trying to convince you. It's also a great example of a persuasive type of book. So remember when we talk about author's purpose? So you have author's point of view, who's telling the story. You have the author's purpose. Why is the author telling you this story? What's their purpose? In this one, it's to entertain, but you could also argue that it's persuade, that you, the wolf wants you to think about, hey, nobody's ever heard my side of the story. Today, we're gonna to read a slightly different version called The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig. Now, at the end, you're gonna pick your favorite version. We've also read a few other variations on the story we've read, The Three Little Pigs and The Sometimes Bad Wolf. We've read The Three Little Super Pigs, and tomorrow I'm also gonna to read to you guys another one of the Super Pigs, because I have it here at home with me, and another one of my favorites, The Three Pigs by David Wisner, which is very cool. So, you have a lot of choices. I want you to one, enjoy the story. Two, Think about, hmm, when I'm done, which one is my favorite? It's okay to have multiple favorites, but in this instance, I want you to think, if I could only pick one to check out from the library or for my parents to buy me this book or for me to just read again, I'm going to pick this book because. I hope you enjoy the reading. Happy learning. Hi, friends. Here is today's story. It is The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig by Eugene Trevitsas and Helen Oxenberry. Let's see how this one's different. Some of you are already making predictions. Once upon a time, there were three cuddly wolves with soft fur and fluffy tails who lived with their mother. The first was black, the second was gray, and the third was white. One day, the mother called the three little wolves around her and said, my little children, it is time for you to go out into the world. Go and build a house for yourselves, but beware of the big bad pig. Don't worry, mother, we will watch out for him, said the three little wolves, and they set off. So some of you are noticing some similarities between this one and the three little pigs. Soon they met a kangaroo who was pushing a wheelbarrow full of red and yellow bricks. Please, will you give us some of your bricks, asked the three little wolves. Certainly, said the kangaroo, and she gave them lots of red and yellow bricks. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of bricks. Hmm, what do you think about those wolves so far? They seem pretty clever. The very next day, the big bad king, pig, came prowling down the road and saw the house of bricks that the wolves had built. The three little wolves were playing croquet in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside the house and locked the door. This is croquet, a super fun game to play outside. Also good for social distancing. Sometimes all readers make mistakes. Did you notice that I made a mistake on the last page? But I noticed it and I went back and reread. That's what good readers do. The pig knocked on the door and grunted, little wolves, little wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair of our chinny-chin-chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his sledgehammer and he knocked the house down. <laughs> The three little wolves only just managed to escape before the bricks crumbled and they were frightened indeed. We shall have to build a stronger house, they said. Just then they saw a beaver who was mixing concrete in a concrete mixer. Please, will you give us some of your concrete? Asked the three little wolves. Notice how polite they are. Also good planners, I've noticed. Certainly, said the beaver, and he gave them buckets and buckets full of messy, slurry concrete. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of concrete. Slurry is sort of like a slushy. It's kind of liquidy and kind of solid. 
like a milkshake would be a great example of something slurry. No sooner had they finished than the big bed pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of concrete that the little wolves had built. They were paying, playing battledore and shuttlecock in the garden, and when they saw the big bed pig coming, they ran inside their house and shut the door. Now some of you are wondering, I've never heard the game battledore or shuttlecock, but you might think, hey, this looks similar to a game I do know, tennis or badminton. But the picture helps me understand that while I don't know the names of the, those games and I don't know how to play them, I kind of get the idea of what's going on. The pig ran the bell and said, Little frightened wolves, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair on our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. What do you think's going to happen next? But the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He went and fetched his pneumatic drill and smashed the house down. Some of you might not know what a pneumatic drill is, but the illustration certainly does help. These three little wolves managed to escape, by their chinny chin, but their chinny chin chins were trembling and trembling and trembling. Look, they made an escape plan. We shall build an even stronger house, they said, because they were very determined. Just then, they saw a truck coming along the road carrying barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. Please, will you give us some of your barbed wire, a few iron bars, and armor plates, and some heavy metal padlocks? They said to the rhinoceros who was driving the truck. Sure, said the rhinoceros, and they gave them plenty of barbed wire, iron bars, armor plates, and heavy metal padlocks. He also gave them some plexiglass and some reinforced steel chains because... He was a generous and kind-hearted rhinoceros. So the three little wolves built themselves an extremely strong house. It was the strongest, securest house one could possibly imagine. They felt absolutely safe. What do you think's gonna happen? The next day, the big bad pig came prowling along the road as usual. The three little wolves were playing hopscotch in the garden. When they saw the big bad pig coming, they ran inside their house, bolted the door, and locked all the 37 padlocks. The pig dialed the video entrance phone and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chins, let me come in. No, 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 said the little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. So he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but the house didn't fall down. But the, big, but the pig wasn't called big and bad for nothing. He brought some dynamite, laid it against the house, lit the fuse, and what do you think's gonna happen? The house blew up. <sighs> the three little wolves just managed to escape with their fluffy tails scorched. What do you think scorched means? It means burned. Something must be wrong with our building materials, they said. We have to try something different. But what? At that moment, they saw a flamingo coming along, pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. Please, will you give us some flowers? Asked the three little wolves. With pleasure, said the flamingo, and he gave them lots of flowers. So the three little wolves built themselves a house of flowers. One wall was of marigolds one of daffodils, one of pink roses, and one of cherry blossoms. The ceiling was made of sunflowers, and the floor was a carpet of daisies. They had water lilies in their bathtub and buttercups in their refrigerator. It was a rather fragile house, and it swayed in the wind, but it was very beautiful. The next day, the big bed Kate pig came prowling down the road and saw the house of flowers that the three wolves had built. He rang the blue bell at the door and said, Little frightened wolves with the trembling chin and the scorched tails, let me come in. No, 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 said the three little wolves. By the hair of our chinny chin chins, we will not let you in, not for all the tea leaves in our china pot. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, said the pig. But as he took a deep breath, ready to huff and puff, he smelled the soft scent of the flowers. It was fantastic. And because the scent was so lovely, the pig took another breath. And then another. 
Instead of huffing and puffing, he began to sniff. He sniffed deeper and deeper until he was quite filled with the fragrant scent. His heart grew tender and he realized how horrible he had been. Right then he decided to become a good, big, good pig. He started to sing and to dance the tarantella. Do you know what the tarantella is? I don't either, but I know it's a dance. And I'm pretty sure a tambourine would go great with a tarantella dance. What do you think the wolves are thinking watching this? At first, the three little wolves were a bit worried. It might be a trick. But soon they realized that the pig had truly changed, so they came running out of the house. They started playing games with him. First they played pig pog and then piggy in the middle. And when they were all tired, they invited him into the house. They offered him tea and strawberries and wolfberries and asked him to stay with them as long as he wanted. The pig accepted and they all lived happily together ever after. I hope you enjoyed this story of the big bad pig and his three little wolves. And I'm wondering of all the three little pig stories and the variations, which one is your favorite?